everybody. Welcome to episode 21 of the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I am your host, Bobby, and I am coming to you from New Brunswick, Canada. Today is Saturday, February 17th, 2018. To any new viewers who may be tuning in for the first time, welcome. And to any returning viewers who may be coming back, welcome back. This is a podcast about mostly knitting, uh, spinning, crochet, lots of fibery fun. So if that's something you're into, do stay tuned. So this week I have quite a bit to show you guys. I'm going to kind of jump right into it. My last episode was like an hour long and I know I personally enjoy watching those episodes that are longer but uh, it took rather all night to upload. Our internet ain't the greatest out here so it takes a while so I'm just going to try to cut down the videos a little bit. So um, yeah, let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to share with you guys today is my baby cardigan that I've been working on. So I finally finished it. So this was the Adia Top Down Baby Cardigan uh, P111. That's what it has on Rivalry. This is by OGE Knitwear Designs. So here is the one I made. Absolutely beautiful. And I did wash this and block it, so it really opened up this uh, pretty lace that's going on here. It's like a leaf decal. So I'm sure you guys can see that. Now there are three sizes to this pattern. There's a zero to three month, there's a six month, and then there's a year. It's knit with a DK weight yarn. For myself, I wanted to use this yarn so it's a worsted, so I just adjusted my needle size so I'd have like a a drapier fabric and then um, it ended up I used the zero three month size and I got a year size out of it because I upped my needle and my yarn cleavage so anyways it looks awesome I followed pattern but uh, the pattern called for full length sleeves I just did three quarter length and also I'll show you the back quick it's just plain stockinette and then I added a cute little flower button to it. So you can add buttons all the way down uh, if you wish. You just would add them to the top here of the leaf decal. I chose not to. I just wanted one on the top. That way you could wear like a pretty top or a dress under it and you could still see it. So, And you don't have to do buttonholes either. You're just putting them into these... Um, little holes that you're making in the lace so that's even better so there's my cardigan I'm in love with it if you want a super easy um, baby knit this would be it it knits up rather quickly it's simple and the lace is very easy too so it's just something to keep your interest it's awesome so that was my baby cardigan the next thing I have my assistant here with me today <laughs> She's not going to make an appearance, but she's here. <laughs> I'm protecting yarn. She's protecting yarn from uh, the kitty. Who's near it. Yes, the cat's very close to the yarn. Not good. So if you hear us hollering in like two minutes, it's, it's like because she took off with here. Yeah, she took off with yarn. So the next thing I have for a finished object is uh, some dishcloths. I'm knitting up uh, for the market, our local market. Uh, Kaylee and I have decided to knit and crochet up some stuff to uh, take, so I decided to do some dishcloths. So here's the first one. I haven't weaved in my ends or anything yet, but here's the first one. This is Burnett's uh, Handicrafter Cotton, and this one here is in the Lemon Swirl colorway. And then I made another one. This is also the Burnett Handicrafter Cotton, and this is in the Violet Stripes colorway. So for this, I just went off of uh, Grandma's uh, Dishcloth Pattern by PJ Allen, and it's just a simple garter stitch uh, dishcloth that's knit on the bias. Super simple. Only difference is I didn't do the holes like the yarn overs on the edges, 
I just decided not to do that. Um, I also went up a needle size, or a couple needle sizes actually. I used a zero millimeter, and I think the pattern calls for like a four or 4.5. It almost used up the whole ball of cotton, which I do like. Um, it made them much bigger, but it kind of made them um, more on the drapey side. So I don't know how well that would do as a dishcloth, but anyway, I think it's fine, but I'm going to go back down to the size that they recommend just so they're a bit more of a denser gauge rather than loose, but they're still awesome. So there's that. Um, I'm probably going to post these to Instagram. Uh, I think her name is Emily from the Yarn Hoarder podcast. She's doing a knit along for the year. It's just a casual knit along where you knit like one dishcloth a week. So like I said, it's casual. So if you don't get one knit every week, don't be like too stressed about it. It's just a casual thing. And I think it's just an Instagram thing as well. I don't think it's running on Ravelry. You just knit your dishcloths, post them to Ravelry and you use her hashtag. So you'll have to check out her her podcast for all that info, but yeah, I think it's cool and it's a great way to use up your stash of cotton. So yeah, there's that one. The next thing I have is a pair of uh, baby socks. Um, last episode, you guys saw that uh, Little Miss Trouble had eaten a pair of my socks and yeah, had to make a replacement. So here they are. I'll show you that so you know that there was actually two there, but so for this I just uh, followed a simple plain Jane uh, baby sock pattern by Kate, Kate Atherley. So I just did my 10 rows of 2x2 two two ribbing, plain Jane knit sock. It does have a gusset heel and a rounded toe. I decided to do cuffs and toes uh, in a 20 gram mini skein that I had from Long Dog Dye Works. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this colorway is some leftovers that I had. It's Hedgehog Fiber uh, in her fingering base, and it's um, in the cheeky colorway. I knit my Mercury socks up in this before, and I had lots left, so yes. So there they are. She is not getting a hold of these ones. They are locked away in Tupperwares now. We, are, As you can see over my shoulder here, we're in the process of reorganizing right now. So we are um, putting everything in Tupperwares like yarn and any projects that we finish. They're going in the Tupperwares just so Rami doesn't get a hold of them because if there is yarn, she's going to go after it. <laughs> So anyways, that was my baby socks. They're all complete. They're for a one-year-old. And Kate's pattern does go up to a one-year size, I rem if I remember. So it's zero to three months up to a year, I believe. So it is a free pattern on Ravelry. So I highly recommend that. So that's my finished objects for this week. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I've been wanting to get the baby socks done for a while and um, I've been uh, needing to get that sweater off the needles so it feels good. Okay, moving on to finished objects, or works in progress, sorry. I have a couple. I have a brand new cast on. Um, this week uh, Tristan from the Yarn Cafe uh, she is one half of the Yarn Cafe podcast. It's a mother-daughter team. And uh, Tristan came out with a new hat pattern. And it's the Wonderwood Beanie um, by Jangan Knits. That's what she goes under on Ravelry. And it's this beautiful cabled hat pattern. So this is what I've done so far. I just casted this on last night. So I haven't got terribly far, but as you can see, it's a beautiful uh, seed stitch, and it's got these nice big cables going around the whole hat. I'm just using a plain white yarn. This is the Patton's uh, Canadian, just in a white color. Nothing too interesting, but this hat is gorgeous alone. You don't really need 
into a fancy of a color yarn. And I just got my cute little birdie stitch marker. I got some new stitch markers in this week, so I'll share those with you in Stash Acquisitions. But yeah, this is the hat. It's absolutely beautiful. Tristan did a really nice job. So yeah, I'm enjoying that. The next thing that I'm going to show you, you guys have already seen, but um, it needed some modification. So um, I am taking part in the knit along that Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast has going on. She is hosting her annual Box of Socks Cal. So you pretty much knit 12 pairs of socks or one pair of socks a month. And at the end of the year, you have a beautiful box of socks. So I've always wanted to partake in it, but I never did. So this year, I want to try to, to do it. So these are my January socks. Now, you guys remember last time I showed you, I did the cuff and I had some of the leg knit up. I ended up ripping this all back this, just this morning, actually. My 2.25s, I'm knitting at too loose of a gauge, so it's way too big. So I decided to set the sock aside until I got my needles in, which I did. I just got them in. So I ripped back to the cuff. The cuff's knit on a 2.25, and I ripped back the, um, the color here, and now I'm doing it on US zeros or a 2 millimeter. So... Yeah, this is my January socks, unfortunately. Yeah, and hopefully it doesn't snap this time. I ended up ordering uh, Knitter's Pride Dreams, so they're wooden needles. I absolutely love them. But uh, the reason why Kaylee said about snapping them in half, my Knit Picks um, Caspian wooden needles, I had a whole set of them. And I have now officially snapped the US zeros, the 2.25s, and I think there was another one that ended up snapping on me. Yeah, it was just funny because you were just knitting normally. <laughs> yeah, I was just knitting on it normally, and I, it literally just I, I hear a, I hear a snap, and you just give me a look. Yep. <laughs> like that wasn't what you think it was. I know. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so I don't know what was going on there. They The Nipix ones, I'm not saying anything bad about them. I do like them, but they seem very flexible, so they're easy to break. With the Knitter's Pride, I feel that they're more sturdier, and um, so far so good. Knock on wood, I haven't broken them, <laughs> but I, I hope not. But anyway, it is what it is, right? So yeah, this is what I have so far. The cuff is just a plain two by two rib, it is in the Knit Picks uh, scroll fingering, just in their white colorway. And then for this color here, I'm using the uh, Arnie and Carlos by Regia. And this is in the Star Knight colorway. So don't mind all that. I, that's what I ripped out. So yeah, just started that this morning, so there's not a whole lot of progress. But hopefully I can get some done this week. And I got another cute little stitch marker. It's just a rose. So, yeah. Not doing too well at that uh, sock, pair of socks a month thing, but whatever I have, I'll be happy with. So, yeah. I'm not following a pattern for these either. It's just a plain vanilla sock, so nothing fancy. Okay, so I have one more work in progress to show you guys, and then I'll move on until stash acquisition. Awesome. Thank you. So the next one up is my sister shawl, and this is by Cozy Up Designs, and they are the Cozy Up with the Stitching Sisters on YouTube here. They have a wonderful podcast. So you guys have seen this many times. But here it is again, still not completed. I have a progress keeper here. So, okay. So the last time I shared, I think I completed clue three. 
so this week I moved on to clue four. So I ended up doing all this striping. And then I moved on into the garter, um, the garter lace section here with the eyelets. Faded into my third color with some more striping. And then I got onto the lacy, second part of the lacy's eggs. Now the lacy's eggs pattern is a 16 row repeat and you, you're repeating it a couple times in pattern. So I ended up uh, making a mistake. I apparently read my yardage wrong for the shawl when I went to start. Uh, so for your third color, you're using 60 grams of yarn. This is the um, knit pick stroll fingering and it comes in a 50 gram ball. Yeah, and I don't have a second ball of this stuff. So I'm knitting away on my lacy's eggs and I started to play yarn chicken and I lost big time because this is all I have left. And I still have another whole repeat and some to go plus some more of this striping here before I'm finished with the blue. So unfortunately I'm going to have to put my shawl on hold <laughs> for at least a couple of weeks until I make an order with Knit Picks to get some more of the blue because yeah, it is, there's been too much work put into the shawl and it is way too beautiful just to fudge up because I want it to look as best as it can because this is the other, other side and then pretty much you're mirroring what's on this side because we cast it on, we had our provisional cast on right here in the center. So everything that's on this side, we're pretty much mirroring for this side. So I don't want to fudge it up because I want it to look right. I do have a second option with this. I do have another ball of stroll fingering in a pure white color. So my second option is I could just get some dye and then dye a the color I need. It's just like a navy blue, so it's not too hard. So I'm still on the fence. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I do want to make an order with Knit Picks regardless for some cotton, so maybe I'll just wait and get the proper ball of yarn for it, or if I get impatient, I might dye it. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, but anyways, I'm pretty sad about that because I really wanted to get this off the needles. I was doing so well with it this week so oh well it is what it is the knit along is finished and I had a lot of fun with it so that's all that matters and in the end I'm still going to have a beautiful shawl so that's okay so yeah might be a couple weeks before you guys see this again and hopefully it will be completed next time you guys see it so yeah I love it, and I'm so sad. Oh well. <laughs> okay, so that again was the my sister's shawl. So next I'm going to go into my stash acquisitions. I had a couple orders come in this week. Um, I think I'll start with the one from Yarn Canada. You want the... Yeah. The one Dad hit on you? Yeah. That's what I mean. I know. Um... I had to make an order with Yarn Canada to get my wooden needles, my knit picks, uh, or sorry, Knitter Pride Dreams. So if you make an order over $45, it's free shipping. So I decided, well, I need the needles. So I just bought um, some T-pins and um, their Knitter Pride ones. I bought a 60-inch cable. It's also the Black Knitter's Pride. And um, I decided to get that because my blanket, my straight to the point, the cable is only a 40 inch, I think, and the stitches are starting to fall off the needles. So I wanted to get a bigger cord. And then, of course, you can't make an order without getting yarn, right? So I ordered three skeins of Cascade 220 Heathers in the Sparrow colorway. 
and this is 100% um, Pavilion Highland wool, but it is super soft. It doesn't feel scratchy at all. It's really nice. I've knit with it before and I loved it. And that is very true to color. So I have decided this is a worsted weight. There's like 220 yards per skein. So I am going to probably kick this up after the podcast because I've been dying to. And uh, I'm going to knit the, uh, the Jamie Shawl by Cozy Up Designs. I've been wanting to do it for a while, so this yarn was specifically ordered for that. So that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I have to have another shawl on the needles. And then I got one more. I have my order from Pulsed Garn. It actually came in this week as well. I've been wanting to order for them for a while to try out the yarn. I've been hearing lots of reviews about it. They are a company in Denmark. Uh, Ellie from Skein Beer Knits uses it and uh, she's given it some good reviews so as well as some other podcasters. So I wanted to try it. Now there's quite the controversy about it because it is on the thin side and it is. It's a fingering weight and as you can tell that's somewhat thin for a fingering but that's okay. Um, I end up getting the their coast base which is a 55% lamb's wool 45% cotton. One of the complaints is that it's really rough. I find this actually to be pretty soft. Um, it does have the uh, the oil in it so like the the lanolin that you get with um, when you process the, the fleece that's still in it which I'm fine with that. Um, it doesn't seem to bother me but when you wash this stuff that gets washed out and it just blooms up. So I'm going to hope that it does do it but I'm loving it. They are really cheap. It's very reasonable priced for all their bases. They even have a cashmere base and they have a ton of colors as well. So I got like a sea foamy green here. My colorway is the spearmint. So I ended up getting four balls. What it's going to be yet, I have no idea. Uh, if you were to double strand this, it actually becomes a light worsted weight. So I might do that. I'm just not sure yet what I'm going to do. But all I know is I wanted to try it. It did come from Denmark and to ship here to Canada, I'm going to say it took less than two weeks. It definitely came really fast. It was reasonable price for shipping and there was also tracking on the package which was nice. So yeah, all in all I was happy I am happy with my purchase and I will give a better review on what I think of the yarn once I start knitting with it. So yeah. Will I order again? Probably. They have so many beautiful colors and I actually want to try their I think their cashmere base next. That would be nice. So yeah, there's that. Um, I actually did have one more thing to show you, but I forgot to bring it over. This is take three of the podcast. So yeah, I just had some stitch markers, but I I'll just needed them. I put them all back in the stitch markers. Yeah, I'll just wait till next podcast and show that with you guys. It's okay. Um, and then hopefully my uh. Order, other order I'm waiting on is from Barnyard Knits. I ordered two skeins from them, so that was supposed to be here yesterday, but as far as I can tell, it's still it was being held in customs. So, yeah, it didn't get here. So hopefully it will be here for the podcast next week, and I'll share that with you, and I'll try to remember to share with you the new last stitch markers that I got in. So sorry about that. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Um, this coming week, I'm probably going to be casting on the Jamie shawl after this because I've been wanting to try to put some work on my socks, maybe even my sweater. I don't know, but whatever. I will see you guys next week. Links will be down below, to, like with show notes for everything I talked about today. 
Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Bobby Minnick and on Ravelry as XCountryGirl 1986X. That will all be listed below as well. You can send me an email at sweetcomfortdesigns at gmail.com if you'd like to reach out to me. I love hearing from you guys. And um, you can check out my website at sweetcomfortdesigns.com where I will have everything posted in the show notes as well as direct links to the patterns. So yeah, until next week, guys, happy knitting. <laughs>